So hello, everyone. I'm happy to be speaking with you today. Thank you to the Society for the Invitation. Like uh, most of you, I'm guessing I belong to the cultural subset Providence Nerd. So this is a special treat um, for me. First, a disclaimer. Some of you might remember a cough syrup commercial from the 80s uh, featured a soap opera actor saying, I am not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Well, I am not a historian, but I play one on Instagram. I understand the term as citizen historian, which I like because I take that to mean civilian. So if I am to academic historians as a hang glider is to a fighter pilot, a citizen historian works for me. Just a little over three years into my Providence journey, I'm not always as well versed in the history of Providence that I'd like to be or aspire to be. So I'm happy to be held to the standard of citizen historian. With that in mind, perhaps the hardest part of preparing this presentation was deciding what audience I would speak to, uh, assuming there would likely be people here who know more about the built history of Providence than uh, I will ever know, and people who have just started learning. So I decided to speak to the 2019 version of myself, if that makes sense. Um, I've got some scripted content to start, obviously, but once we start getting into a lot of photos, uh, I'll be trying to get through the, as, as many as I can. Uh, because I assume that's mostly why, why I'm here. For those of you who may not be familiar with my Instagram account, PVD Now and Them, it's very simple and not very original concept. Uh, post a current photo and a historic photo of the same building or street scene. Uh, PVD Now and Then is technically my Instagram account, but I usually feel like the manager or caretaker. I'm happy to take credit for the work involved, and it does take work, but the content is essentially um, found content. And it almost has nothing to do with me or my personality or talents, such as they might be. Uh, I sometimes think the only skill I bring to PVD now and then is the ability to stare at old photos for hours and hours. I am, however, indebted to countless resources and inspirations. Too many to uh, name, but I should acknowledge a few very quickly. Uh, Woodward's Guide to Providence Architecture and Lost Providence by David Brissett were both seeds for PVD now and then. Even though Woodward is now <clears throat> 20 years old, excuse me. And updated on the society's website, I still open the book all the time. Uh, not long after I started PVD now and then, I discovered the website um, Art in Ruins, which has been documenting changes to the local built environment for over 20 years. And it very quickly became an inspiration and resource. More recently, I discovered writer historian Thomas M. Polites, um, who I've never met, so I apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name. He's written booklets on my first two Providence obsessions, uh, as we'll see in a few minutes, the Cranston Street Armory and Cathedral Square. And both of these booklets are interesting and helpful and I think provide a fresh approach to these not uncommon Providence topics. The list is much, much longer and includes all the usual suspects in terms of photo archives but I have to say finally that PVD now and then simply would not exist if it were not for the online archives of the Providence Public Library. Easily 85% of the old photos I post come from the Providence Public Library online archive. For example, um, this one. So uh, of course we have to get Industrial Trust out of the way. Um, I'm proud of this photo because of the date. Uh, my followers have taken me to task uh, as a uh, oh, being a horse historian only on Instagram for not always providing dates. Um, so I've tried to make a commitment to doing those. Not all the photos are dated in the archive, so I have to do a little research. And this one I'm proud of because I found out that this this uh, steam engine uh, was introduced in 1937, the 1400. It was among the last of the steam engines. It only lasted 12 years before they moved on to diesel. Um, so I'm making assumption here that this is them taking a picture uh, uh, proudly of their new uh, steam engine. So uh, uh, this photo, um, I, all the all the combinations that I'll show you that I have posted on my account, um, I sort of stamped them here as better than average engagement, average engagement or lower than average engagement. And I really think uh, asking why that is, why do some photo combinations get more engagement than others is an interesting question to ask. I have my theories um, and I think it's really what I call the, the feeling of time travel. If there's a high degree of recognition 
um, combined with a high degree of transformation, usually with timestamps like uh, transportation or people. Um, the, and there's a physical feeling. I mean, and I do mean physical feeling of time travel as people look at the photos. I think that's where we get a high degree of uh, transform or um, engagement. So uh, yes, this is the industrial trust. And if you're going to call it the Superman building, I just want to uh, say that in my opinion, I think we should call one financial plaza the Spider-Man um, building. For those of you who aren't comic book inclined, that's the Daily Bugle where Spider-Man works as his uh, alter ego. Although I lived in uh, most of my life in California, just prior to moving to Providence, I had lived in Georgia for several years. In Georgia, I had a 23-mile commute to work every day, uh, 23 miles one way. And the nearest bus stop was seven miles from my house. Foster might be only 5% of Rhode Island, but it's 90% of Georgia. Being from California, I didn't consider a 23-mile commute unusual, uh, annoying to be sure, uh, but not unusual. I've learned since moving to Rhode Island uh, that in Rhode Island, 23 miles is a day trip and you pack a lunch, uh, maybe even an overnight bag. So when we moved to our apartment in Providence, just over uh, a mile and a half from my office, there was no question I would be walking to work. And that is how I came to know Providence on foot. I think that's an important point um, if I had moved way out in the country somewhere, say Lincoln, and was driving to work, I think my entire relationship to the city would be different, and probably PVD now and then would not have happened. I'm not sure what to make of this exactly, uh, but my belief in the walkable city has evolved since then from extrinsic and intellectual to something intrinsic and personal, how it feels to walk through the city more than what I think about the experience. Uh, the next part of the story will be familiar to anyone native to New England who talks to anyone who is relocated, especially from the West Coast, but really almost anywhere west of the Mississippi or south of the Mason-Dixon. Soon after we moved to Providence, when friends and family would ask me how the move was working out, I would just say, there's a castle at the end of my street. It's actually the Cranston Street Armory, of course, but let's not be coy, it's a castle. There's a castle at the end of my street. And there it is. I've lived quite a few places. Uh, coffee, the coffee industry can be a little nomadic, but I've never had a castle thing on my street. Um, I like this photo because I can see my house just barely. And since it's on the most endangered list this year, you can just see the Messer Street or the uh, Messer Elementary. Excuse me. I also like this photo because it gives you an opportunity, uh, us an opportunity to look at um, buildings that are no longer with us. Just a lot of red, I guess. Um, the yellow X uh, uh, there on the south side of Providence is where Tropical Liquor is today. It's yellow because I don't know if that building was demolished and the single story built where Tropical Liquor is today or uh, if that was demolished except for the first floor. So sort of left that yellow. Um, there we go. So let's spend a little time uh, with the armory since we're here. Uh, so this is a post I've done. This got lower than average. This is because there's uh, little identification with the building that was there before. People don't um, identify with the building. Nobody remembers the old white mill, at least nobody that's looking at my Instagram account. Uh, previous to that, it was the garrison that was involved with the door rebellion. So something like this uh, will generally get lower than average in engagement, uh, which is fine. I don't, that, that won't change what I post. I'm going to post uh, sort of for the record, everything uh, that I come across just about. But this also absence, uh, I don't have any photos in here that are uh, like buildings that were turned into parking lots. We all know those, but those get very low engagement. Uh, people do not connect to, to absence. So uh, like um, the Hoppin building on snow in Westminster, if I were to post a picture, I have posted a picture of that. And then the parking lot, very little engagement, no surprise there. So this is interesting. This photo is dated. Uh, this is a very common photo of the, um, the armory. 
it's dated 1901 in the archive. Uh, I, that seems early, but we know the building took quite a while to build. Um, and I think uh, whatever the date is, actually, I do think it's early. And I think that the West Tower here is not washed out or overexposed. I think the West Tower in this photo hasn't been built yet. Here we go, the same photo. Um, I could do a whole presentation on the uh, artistic license involved with hand painting black and white photos 100 years ago. Uh, see, we got clearly in the original photo, it's winter, but then somebody decided it was what way, late fall maybe, and then somebody else decided it was springtime. Uh, but posting these, so the, the postmark on this, this uh, upper left, this photo here, is um, August of 06. So we do know at least uh, two years before, almost two years before the building was open to the public. We know that the building was finished late 07, but did not host its first public gathering um, until April of 08. So, and here's another view uh, from further out in the park, uh, and you still see the West Tower is missing. Postmark 08. Uh, this would be just before the building was open to the public. So you see the tower's missing, but also you can see just interesting, you can see the Dexter statue, which used to be on the uh, south end of the park facing north. Now it's on the north end facing south. And then uh, speaking of the artistic license that the postcard artists took, uh, here's another one of these. And look, look at that. So, uh, we've got a tree and a post. So this guy apparently figured the post and the lamppost and the tree were inconvenient. But again, this one's postmarked, again, two years before the building opened. Um, so the postcards of the building while being constructed apparently were out there. I like this one because uh, the the person wrote a note, I cross here every day and, and so do I. After, uh, I don't have an exact date here, um, but obviously after we we're finished with the construction at some point, I would, if if you force me to guess the date, I'd say 1910. Here's a fire brigade uh, working the uh, uh, training out in the park proving grounds. And the auto show in 1932. So these things kept happening as I walked around uh, Providence. I was sort of like Jack Skellington in um, Nightmare Before Christmas in Christmas Town. You know, what's this? What's this? What's this? And uh, and uh, the, my second obsession walking to work was Cathedral Square. Well, not Cathedral Square so much as St. Peter, St. Paul. Uh, I just sort of stood there dumbstruck, staring at the first time I walked through on my way to work. So we're going to uh, do some, again, this is average engagement on this is a little surprising, but um, a little disorienting because we have the statue of Mayor Doyle, which people can't really connect to. It's now over on, um, or relate to uh, being in that spot. It's now over on uh, Broad and um, Empire or Chestnut. So we're going to do sort of a 360 degree tour of uh, Cathedral Square, um, using the uh, Mayor Doyle statue as sort of the center point. So we're looking south or northeast here. That's the YMCA in the background, which was finished in 1890. So based on the police uniforms, um, I'm guessing this is 1899, I give or take. The fact that they're somehow celebrating the, the Doyle uh, statue makes me think they're celebrating the 10th year anniversary. Again, lower than average engagement because there's just no, there's very little connection uh, to this old photo, to people's current experience. Not only if they have an experience, many people I find uh, have never even been to Cathedral Square. I mean, the walkers, you know. So here we go looking east or east-ish. And this is the uh, dedication of the Doyle statue. That's Central Baptist Church Tower uh, here, which would have been where uh, where Empire and uh, Wabasset Broad 
uh, this would have been when uh, before Empire was expanded, it took out Chinatown, and when it was Walker Street. Here we are, uh, south southeast, nineteen twenty, back to eighteen eighty nine, looking southwest. Um, gentleman installing the statue. Looking west, you can see All Saints in the back in the distance here. Uh, very low, again, average, because they're just people can't relate to the to the image. It's interesting. It's a good story. People enjoy seeing it, uh, but there's not a connection. And there's certainly not time travel, right, because there's no recognition. And then I'm calling this 1960 approximately, I believe that's a 58 Chrysler uh, in front of the statue. And then if you look out in the distance, there's some the, the vacant air here. Uh, which not should not be that way. So I'm guessing that it's uh, demolition has already begun for the freeway or is in progress. So it's probably the third building that grabbed my attention, the journal building, received in 1907. Um, and then ask all the questions I ask myself, uh, what's this? Some questions I begin asking myself, well, why is this? Why is the armory empty? Um, why is such a beautiful building like St. Peter's and Paul surrounded so by so much ugly? And you expect me to believe that the journal moved from this building to that building? Then I sort of had a joke inside my head that the reason that the journal building got covered up in the 50s and 60s, um, as it appears here, uh, it was because the journal was embarrassed by the trade that it made. That's just in my head. That's not real. So finally, uh, I begin to have this animation in my head of the westward expansion of the city, um, and the, the 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 changes and the evolution of the cove. Um, which, zooming in here, this is 1823. I've been waiting to pull out this map for three years now, so that I could say this is 200 Providence 200 years ago. So here, if we sort of triangulate um, going down Washington and then exchange, we sort of see that the Burnside Monument, if it somehow traveled back in time and stayed in the same place, would be underwater. I mean, who knows how far maybe Mr. Burnside, General Burnside, would, his head would be sticking up. And here's sort of that same time around that same time and I've never posted this because I just know it's, I may at some point, it's a, the size is awkward, but we're looking um, from Smith Hill towards downtown. So Kennedy Plaza was a beach 200 years ago. I'm giving some context, this is sort of how the, the animation in my head as I think about the city sort of happens. Um, then we've got the Capitol would go here, got brown wait a minute let me fix that brown here urban greens uh over by uh cranston and westminster split and then the castle at the end of my street the armory and now we're going to start to move through the photos really quickly uh because i want to get through them all i've structured the rest of the deck so that we can stop anytime somebody shoot up a flare uh, if i need to stop uh, and it won't be a super disruptive um, and here we have uh, where the baseball stadium was for the Providence Grays uh, right there along Messer at Messer and Hudson so home plate was approximately uh, the southwest corner of uh, Hudson and Messer um, and Messer's Street's been there for a long time longer than 200 years I think we all know that the Westminster and Cranston have been around different names going all the way back to when they were just trails. Uh, but Messer's also been been with us for a while. Um, anyway, the baseball stadium, the trolley used to, they had a trolley line that you could always go down Westminster to Olneyville. Um, but when there was a baseball game, they would open up tracks to take you from uh, down Messer to the, to the baseball stadium. And here they are, the Providence Grays. 
in, um, let's see, 19, 1875. So I like this set because the building in the background um, is still with us. You can go see it today. Uh, the postcard here says Messer Street School, but it was actually Willow Street School. So Now here's an example of a, a lower than average engagement, the uh, Westminster Congregational Church on Matthewson. Uh, I think everybody that's interested in architecture probably knows that you can cross street in the parking lot and still see the top of the the building here. But there's just it's a uh, sorry uh, lower than average engagement because of little connection. The two photos don't no feeling of time travel, right? Uh, better than average engagement. Uh, City Hall, City Hall always scores well. And yes, I do wait for the bus. Uh, anytime I have a trolley, old transportation, I do try and capture the modern equivalent. Uh, see, looking at City Hall, uh, just the third floor, you can see we have more windows now than we did and a little less ornamentation. Okay, Merchant's Block. We are in Exchange Place, Kennedy Plaza, lower than average, because super disorienting, of uh, interesting, great story. You can see the Billmore in the background. Uh, by this time, the soldiers and sailors would have been in the middle of uh, Exchange Place, where it lived for a while. Sorry. Better than average, something that people are very familiar with. Average on Westminster. Uh, this I think this gets average engagement because people see the shepherd's clock, and so that that sort of anchors it for them. Uh, the movie that was playing uh, "Too Many Girls" happens to be the movie where Desi Arnaz and Lucy Lucille Ball met, which is how we uh, where we get the date. Lower than average just because, oh, I did, I said we didn't have a parking lot photo, but we do. The old police and fire headquarters. Uh, it's just hard to connect to a, a lot. And just in case you ever see uh, the in the northwest corner of that parking lot, there's this random uh, ruin, I guess. And well, that's where it came from. It came from the police and fire headquarters building. There's no plaque or anything. So it took, I mean, it was just accident that I came across what that was. The river's always gonna do well. This guy, always gotta do this guy. So he's walking in front of the Crown uh, Hotel, which is basically uh, where the Snowden Hall is now. Um, cafeteria, etc. The Crown Hotel was a little further east, and where uh, the gate is, the, there was a, a road a street lower than average because of the absence again. Uh, now, this uh, surprised me when it got better than average, um, and I think it's because everybody. They connect with it. Every, I mean, if, if I say to you, and the 7-Elevens, I need to retake the photo because the 7-Eleven's gone now. Uh, but if I said to most people, you know, the 7-Eleven on Wabasset, um, almost everybody would say, yeah. Of course, Conrad, beautiful building, my favorite building downtown. So this is on Franklin, the trolley and the bus are about to make a right onto Washington, but not nothing familiar. Uh, a great story, interesting picture, historically a little connection. Turk said, always popular. And this is uh, 1912, here this banner is, uh, is a campaign flyer for banner for a TF Green. The 
the YWCA on Washington at Jackson, would have been Jack Washington and Jackson Street, now Jackson Walkway. Mike, just jumping in to give you a two minute warning. Great. Okay, so Westminster Street, lower than average, it's a good photo, but nobody's gonna relate to that one. And my favorite, of course, is the uh, coffee house or the, the coffee roastery on Wabasset. We're almost done. Paracinema across the street. This house on uh, Hidden, which is very popular, but in the background, you can see the, the only street Baptist church, which moved to a modern building further up the street. Blood photo. Clements and looking down at Westminster there. Dorrance and Wabasset. Federal Hill. Gosh, I have more than I thought. And the arcade. Westminster and uh, Dean. This is uh, Waterman on the east side. North Main, Woolworth and Hotel Dorrance, Hope Street at the high school, right where Hope and Thayer split. And the business library that used to be located briefly outside of City Hall of all things. And the sailor on Westminster and Matthewson, Tilton Thurber in the background. Low, can't relate, that's the outlet across the street. Unexpectedly high engagement with Fulton Alley, looking at um, Union. And there. So, extra credit slides in case I was finished early, but you don't get to see them because I didn't finish early. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Um, it's hard to believe that you have only been in Providence for three years. You know the city and your cardinal directions and landmarks better than most, I would say. Um, and we uh, folks can always find you at PVD now and then if you want to continue the conversation, ask follow up questions, geek out about your favorite Providence buildings, and so on. Thank you once again, Mike Ferguson for joining us today.